Hello everyone, Joanne with StampingInTheValley.com and welcome to my craft room. It's paper pumpkin time again and this is a very special box because it is their six year um, anniversary so it looks birthday to me. Before we go into this I want to apologize for the glitch if any of my customers or any of you all out there got caught up in that glitch where you were charged more for this kit and um, Stampin' Up! is trying to uh, get everybody refunded and some of the kits are, yes, going to be late. I so apologize for that. Out of my control, of course, as a demonstrator. And, you know, I guess when you are servicing the entire United States, stuff happens, you know. And um, not, you know, a lot of people have been um, really angry about it uh, and I'm sorry for that but it happens you know and um, you're gonna get your refund and you're gonna get your kits so um, I don't know what else to say about that but hang in there it's coming I haven't even opened this box yet I do want to say before we open this box that celebration is ending March 31st now this is where you receive free product and it's also the end of this promotion. If you are thinking about ordering $100 worth of product, now is the time, so seriously guys, to sign up as being a demonstrator. Because you're not only going to get the rest of the little bit of this quarter, but you're going to get the whole nother next quarter, which is going to incorporate the brand new catalog that gets launched in June. But you won't have to satisfy your $300, you know, um, um, quota until the end of the next quarter so you're getting a little bit of free time there and like I say you're going to be in there to pre-order from the brand new catalog so this is a great time to sign up now um, if you do sign up celebration does not apply okay um, because like stepping up is like that's double dipping um, in two bonuses kind of thing so you'll get $76 worth of product but then on your next order if it's before March 31st you can pick from free items or you can pick option two here for $129 you still get $175 worth of product which gives you 76 of free product there and then you will receive this beautiful tote here so I, that is still going on. So just, you know, to make you aware, or if you're, you're a customer and you're thinking about anything that was free, especially, <laughs> especially when they put this Painted Seasons right here for free, this paper, with a $50 order, you can go to stampinginthevalley.com and click on that big blue button and order any and all of your Stampin' Up! products. But here is that Painted Seasons DSP, and it is number 149574. Sometimes they're a little hard to find, um, you know, when they're uh, another release. But there's the number on that, and people are going crazy over that paper. Just beautiful. Now, the Occasions catalog will run until June. All right, this, so what's in here is going to run until June. That's a lot of fun. So let's just get to this kit. It, I have not even opened it. I just got it out of the mail last night. So I like to open it with you guys because it's fun for me. <laughs> and I hope it's fun for you. Okay, so many uses. A free stamp set. Let's see. Ooh, let's see what we get. Oh, I love polka dots. Oh, this is Poppy Parade. We get a... Um, a spot or a marker whatever helps us with the kit everything is packaged like this I am so just now excited about this let me show you if you are a new paper pumpkin subscriber you'll receive this clear block that will say paper pumpkin on it with your first subscription when you're a new subscriber you get that um, so I'm excited look at all the numbers and everything here and the the hashtag this balloon guys if you have the balloon punch this coordinates with that punch isn't that fun and now you're getting this today we celebrate you look at that candle with the dots on it cute oh, that's a pretty that I like that happy birthday that I like that font on there this is just some streamers and a hat and it's your happy birthday or it's your birthday love that that you can coordinate so these are the two stamp sets and this is amazing I love these numbers those are fantastic numbers I know this kit is for a birthday but 
you guys this these you can make a calendar with these numbers you know your own little personalized calendar you don't have to use the balloon or anything like that I am thinking of all kinds of ways I love those numbers and I love dots so poppy parade so let's see what we get it always comes wrapped in a pretty little tissue paper and oh my goodness they are happy birthday pop-out cards, guys. I swear, I think that's exactly what these are. They pop out. Oh, how much fun. Eight cards and eight envelopes. Let's open it and see what we get. How much fun. Now, with Paper Pumpkin, the only thing you really need is a scissor. They send you everything. Punch-outs. Uh, sometimes things are uh, adhesive-backed. They <clears throat> send you all your dimensionals and your glue dots, as you can see right here in our little package here. Let's open this. We've got some tape, it looks like. Maybe. Let's see. We have some glue dots, some dimensionals, and I'm thinking this is double-sided tear and tape. Wow, yes it is. Yes, this is exactly double-sided tear and tape. How much fun is that? Here are some cutouts. I don't know what we use them for. Some flags. Because, like I say, you see me opening this. Here's our beautiful envelopes. Whisper White. I knew it. I knew that they would do an insert. Oh, that is so pretty. Let's see. Are they all the same? No. Look at those inserts on these envelopes, guys. Okay, there's, there's the yellow. And I bet there's yellow and then the, the pinkish color. Yes. So two different designs of inserts on our envelopes. I love that. That's, that's just fun. Okay, now we have some cutouts. These are candles. I don't know how we're going to use any of this yet. Here are the cards. This is what's so wonderful. They've got these scored. I just have to follow the directions, and these are going to pop right out. They are cut and scored for us. Isn't that fun? Just so much. Oh, just fun, fun in the craft room this afternoon. So here's our cards. There's one style, and then there's the other. Oh, I love it. Okay, with candles, and here's some hats, some bows, two of those. And I don't, I don't know what these would be. Oh, these are our card bases. Hello? <laughs> yes, these are our card bases. Already scored for you, just like that. Beautiful. Let's see, and then we have some other flags. We have numbers here. These are all numbers. Oh, that's fun. Look at these. Oh, love that. Look at that. I love polka dots. And now here's some stripes, and these are card bases also. So two different types of card bases. Two different types, you know, they'll coordinate with the envelopes. Isn't that beautiful? So much fun. And then these this, like confetti looking, these are numbers also. Here's the three. Let's just pop it out and look at it. Just like that. Now that's fun. All right, we'll see what we do with all of this. I don't know. And here is just um, some pop-outs. I guess we put this on the, the card. I don't know what we do with that yet. And here are the directions. Now, Stamp It Up always provides us wonderful directions right here. And then, of course, there's people like me that watch videos, read the directions, and there's all kinds of stuff on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> and then in the directions, it'll take you through step by step. Just follow the steps along with me on the video. And then we have a nice 9-inch ruler down here in case we have to measure anything. They always give you a little ruler. The most you need with these kits is a pair of snips. That's it. Hey, I'm going to put these cards together and I'll be right back and we'll start to put one together on camera. So I'm going to start with my card base here and I'm going to fold it on the score line. I am going to use a bone folder because this is a 3D card and I really need this card base to stay down. So I'm really going to use my bone folder here and crease that. See how it lays nice and flat that way? Now we're go I'm using my large ink pad of Poppy Parade, and I'm going to, because I had one in the large ink pad, I wasn't going to open my spot. 
and I'm just going to I like this squiggle right here so I'm going to put this one at the top and that at the bottom I don't really think it matters so you want to stamp that in the middle of the card on either side that is our card base we want to bring in a banner here and we want to stamp it's your birthday and I've already put this on my clear block just like that and what I did was I took my stamps I put them on this banner and then I picked them up with this clear block and they're in perfect position so we're going to tap that into the poppy parade let me pull this down so that I get this on here correctly for us right there beautiful perfect and I'll put this aside I'm going to bring my card uh, insert in and I want to put this little saying today we celebrate you that's sweet so there in the poppy parade and just up in that corner perfect now this let's bring our card base back in let's go ahead and attach our yellow scalloped flag our banner here now I'm going to use my snail just to save time but if you don't have snail that's what these dots are for you put four in each corner and glue it down but just not to sit here and pull those backs off and everything and then those are really mini glue dots they're real small and I really like those so I think I'm gonna save them for other projects so I'm gonna put this in the middle of the card letting my confetti that's why you want that confetti to the edge here and in the middle letting it hang out on either side the it's your birthday is gonna go right down here isn't that adorable and we'll pop that up with dimensionals but not yet this is flat we want to leave this flat now um, this card I just put the number 10 on with a little hat there uh, because I figure that some kids in my grandson's class must be like even next year turning 10 but what I am going to do is I'm going to wait to put numbers on these cards until it's somebody's birthday you get all kinds of numbers here I even poked the three out right there and um, there's just two sets of all the numbers here and I, I don't want to make them up with the numbers on them because how do you know who's going to turn what age so but I do know that my grandson will be turning eight in May so this card I'm going to make with the eight now <clears throat> let's talk about folding this I ran into a little bit of like a oopsie oopsie when I folded you know it there's a little bit of a curve on this so watch what I do this is what I came up with I think that you should take this card and fold it in half all right this is what I felt helped me the best let it line up and on these score lines on the top and on the bottom you want them to fold I just finger folded that that's it Okay, so you want to fold it in half. Now, your cakes are going the wrong way. So you want to just pop them out and give them a pinch. Pop them out, give them a pinch. All right? And then take this, these sides where it's scored, and just kind of bend them. Just finger fold bend them a little bit on that score line. Because you want this card to collapse down like this. But this has to stay out see these two because they're going to go into the card base they have to stay down this has to come toward you so when you do this just a little bit of be careful let's fold this side also let's fold these sides up and i want to show you how this is going to go now you can collapse this down okay and your presents are inside do you kind of see how i manipulated that just a little bit so the first thing you want to do let's go over that again is fold it in half just like those slots are not even there open it up push the presents out fold onto these score lines all three of them on each present then fold your card in half the presents are now inside I think you should use a bone folder on this or something that's going to press these down so that they will be predominant inside the card and then right there okay and then you have that to pop out very nicely 
all right now we'll, we'll even do it on the other card now this is where your tear and tape comes in and I <laughs> knowing me let me close this ink okay I found the best thing to do is tear and tape one side so let's see let me put this bone folder here kind of get something to hold that down I bet this stamps okay right there the ink is best hold that down I want to put tear and tape across the bottom here and you get this in the package and so I'm just going to add this to the bottom and it fits just perfectly on this piece just perfectly if any hangs off you know you can just roll it onto itself it sticks to itself of course and then I just tear it right there okay you want to do the same thing on the top here now you have a little bit more room here so that's nice and but you want to get it to the edge to the top and you want to take your tear and tape and just like that and then you want to come down this side and I'm just going to bring this over just like that right down to that tape perfect alright now we can pull these off pull these paper the paper backing I have to admit the um, the video from Stampin Up said to do this on both sides um, I'm I know me only too well and I will have this stick stuck to the ceiling if I put, <laughs> put too much tear and tape on it guys um, so I just do one side and I'll show you why because I think that this is an easier way honest to goodness to attach this now bring your card base in where you have your banner on that's the front and you're we're going to work with this side of the card so let me move that out of the way while I stick to it I'm gonna use my ink pad to hold that down so this side now that you've got your tear and tape on you want to bring it to your base and this is why I want you want to put the um, scored area toward the scored area on the middle of the card All right leaving equal distance top and bottom so I want to do that that is perfect and then you want to push that side down you'll see the method to my madness in just a second okay now I'm going to move my pad and now I'm going to take my tear and tape and attach it to the bottom here Ooh, that just tore right off didn't it that's okay and another little piece right here we want to attach that right to the end on that right right to the edge then the top same thing this card will take a little bit of maneuvering but once you get it um, it's a lot of fun right there on the top and now here on this long side of the card just like that now go ahead and remove your backing if you have any hanging over now is the time to kinda you know work it onto itself just like this we have two little pieces down here get my fingernail in there use my pokey tool just have to lift that backing off of this and it is double sided so you know it's designed to stick alright there we go and then this little piece right here that we had to attach just like that alright now this is very sticky here the only thing you need to do to get everything to line up is close your card just like that isn't that easy and watch it's perfect it's absolutely perfect huh. isn't that wonderful 
So remember, I just did one side, guys. I find that that is like the easiest way and the safest way not to get it stuck to a lot of things that it doesn't need to be stuck to. And I feel like that is a great way to do that. Now we're going to take our little bows here. So sweet. We need the little uh, green one and the white and gray and then the poppy parade. Just like that. We're going to take our dimensionals and one on each. If you're having trouble with your dimensionals and they're not sticking, just call Stampin' Up! They'll send you out some other ones. Now the red one goes on the bottom here, on this in the middle of the present bow, right there. The white one goes on this side of the yellow and kind of up because it can. it can it can stick up a little bit because you know you're still inside the card this one I wouldn't stick up and then adjust the dimensional on this we're almost done with our first card here the, the sticky came off of the back of my dimensional there All right, now that's okay and now this one's gonna go right here and I'm going to put it toward the top of the present just so that you can see a little bit of that line there. Isn't that adorable? Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's go ahead and finish the inside of, uh, or the outside of our card because we finished the inside. The happy birthday, I'm going to attach three dimensionals. Or you could use glue dots if you wanted it flat, whichever that you'd like to use. Just peel the backs off. Cute. And we're going to place this down here, kind of toward the bottom of our banner there. Now we're going to put our number eight right here. Oh, how sweet. And I'm just going to put one dimensional in the middle. That's really all he needs right there. And I see that the adhesive is coming off the back of my dimensionals. So that's kind of not fun. If that happens, you could also put some snail or liquid glue or a glue dot. Use a glue dot. Now I'm going to put my number eight here. And then I want to get a hat. And I'm going to put a dimensional on that. And that one came off just fine and I'm going to put a hat on the number eight. Isn't that adorable? That's our first card. So we have an eight and a ten. It's your birthday. And look at how wonderful the inside of those came out. Like I said, we'll go over it again on how to attach the inside on the next card. There's a little bit of a curve to it, but I think I've got it figured out. And I think that that is the easiest way to do it. One side, and then you could just fold your card over when you have your tear and tape on the other. But didn't those come cute? I love the little hats. I'll be back in a minute. We'll put the next one together. Here's our next birthday card. And I can't help but use these numbers. They're absolutely so sweet, and I love polka dots. Um, and so I'm going to be turning 61, so I made this birthday card for me because I like it so much. Look at that. Isn't that fun? I'm going to give you a little trick with those candles too. Um, so we're going to put this one together now. And this pairs with the envelope that has the yellow stripes. Isn't that sweet? I want to show you, I did all of my cards. I did all of the other ones. And I have a daughter turning 39. I love that this year. So her birthday card is done. I've got one turning 37. My grandson's turning 8, and somebody must be turning 10, and I'm turning 61. So, I did all of these. How much fun are these? Just so sweet. And then I took my confetti, and I stamped all of my envelopes, front and back. Isn't that fun? Okay, so let's go ahead and start to put this card together. First, I am going to stamp my envelope. I think that was just too cute. I'm bringing my photo or my um, foam mat because we're on photopolymer. And I'm just going to take my confetti here. 
just make a pretty little envelope. Just like that. I, I like to decorate my envelopes. That makes me happy. Now, <laughs> now we're going to bring in this tag right here, the little scalloped one. And we're going to put happy on the top and birthday at the bottom in our poppy parade. Happy, right there, and then birthday. So I started thinking about people that I know and when their birthdays are coming up. And I have two girls at work that are turning 31 this next year. So those will be two of the cards. So we're going to move that aside. And then I'm going to bring my base in. And I want to stamp today we celebrate you. Just like we did on the other one up in this corner. Just like that. Let me move my stamps out of the way. All right. That gets rid of the ink. And that's a good thing for me. Now, let's go ahead and make our little element here. And like I said, I have um, some friends at work. They're in their 30s. Um, they just turned 30, so this year they'll be doing 31. So why not just make them a card? At work, whenever it's somebody's birthday, I always do provide the card. So I think that's kind of fun. And I appreciate them uh, enjoying my crafting enough for me to do that for everyone. I think that's kind of fun. So I did switch to my other mini dimensionals, guys. Those other ones, I'm sorry to say, they were peeling off. I will be calling Stampin' Up! about that. That's all you got to do is call 1-800-STAMPIN'UP. Tell them that you had a problem with your dimensionals. The glue um, was releasing. And they will send you out some more dimensionals from what I understand. Of course they will. They always do. So 30. I'm going to put my 3 here. And then my 1 here. Oh, isn't that adorable? And, and for this, I'm going to use my little red hat. Just like that. I'm going to just make my little three very happy there, like that. Okay, so I'm going to move this aside. And I'm going to bring in my card base. Let's see, we're done with that. And I'm going to go ahead and fold it in half. And again, I'm going, I am going to use the bone folder on this. It's really the best. Get it flat. Now, we're going to bring this in. And we're going to fold the whole card in half. Which, yes, your presents are going the wrong way right now, but it's okay. So fold it in half. Finger fold the top right here and the bottom right here. And then I do press these down just to get that score line. Open it up. Bend your presents out and fold on these score lines. Just kind of crease it on every score line that Stampin' Up! provided for you. Just like that. Let's do this side. You're not going to hurt anything. Just take it easy. You know, you're not going to rip it. Okay, now, push your presents inside. Push them in. Let your card fold down on itself. It's like a spring. See how I push them in? These two are out. Now take your bone folder and go ahead and do your creasing down here. If you don't have a bone folder, you could use um, a plastic knife. Something like that is fine for this. Just something with a flat edge, just to push everything down. Now see how that made those presents just pop in? in and out just like that. So you fold it in half first and then you crease your score lines, push your presents in and you will be fine. It will it will take you no time to put that together. All right, now, on this side or the other side, whichever side you want to start on, add your tear and tape right at the top. And then down here really sticky which is great because it really sticks to the inside of the card and then here
just like that. Your candles now are going to go on the top here and the bottom one here. Um, fold this out, fold it out flat. This is how, there's a short one and a long one. And the tear and tape is already on here. I didn't even see it. Didn't even see it until I started working with it. So here's your short. Take your tear and tape off. Make sure your candles do not go over the top of your card because you will have a hard time getting it in the envelope. Take your candles now and place them on the back side. Actually, fold them in half, make a crease. I should have done that before I ripped that tear and tape, but that's okay. Just make your crease. Now your crease goes in where this score line is. Take them down far enough to where your candles do not stick out of your card and just press these in now. Okay. Then I just kind of work them to the front a little bit. Just pop them out there to the front, okay? So that you get this effect. You see? And then you can bend these out. It uh, When I put the first card together, I did it this way. You know, where I already had it in the card and then I attached it. And I was like, oh, that's a good way to really mess them up. So um, I found that attaching them when the card is flat is easier. So let's do the bottom one again, right here. We will get the long candles right here. And instead of pushing those candles through, let's put them through first. Okay, guys, let's do that. Oh, I should have folded it folded in half. I always pull that tear and tape too soon. I, okay, so fold it in half and pinch this so that you know where the center is. Now you want to, I'm going to this time, I'm going to feed my candles all up under there. This one doesn't matter. It will not go off the page. So I just put this toward the top, letting the center be the center right there. And now there are your candles stuck to your card easily. So feed them through and stick your candles down. Very, very simple while your card is still outside of the base. Now we can go ahead and um, pull this tear and tape. Pull the backing off of the tear and tape. just like that. Bring your card base in and of course your card's going to open like this. So watch what you do here. This is really important that you watch, you know, look at it first. Okay, we're opening like this. So you're going to take this side that has the tear and tape on it and put it on the front. Allowing this to line up right into, right on that score line. And then just push your card down. Push your inside down. See what that does? It makes it perfect. Now, go ahead and add the tear and tape to this side. And see, that was really an easy way to put those candles on. Remember, feed them through first, fold, feed them through, and then attach them. And the top ones, make sure that they don't go out the top because of your envelope. You won't be able to get them in. And then this here. Just like that. Now we're going to pull this tear and tape, just the backing. Just like that. And now you're going to take your card and you're just going to fold it. You already have it on there. It's already perfect. Just fold it and it's going to pick it right up. Isn't that perfect? Look at that cute little birthday card. So sweet. Now, this goes here. First, we're going to use some stripes. So adorable. You will use the, um, the glue dots that came with it. It would take like four of them, that's all. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm just going to use my snail. And if you wanted to save those glue dots, you can use your snail too. 
just like that. And this goes on the upper third. From one edge to the other, make sure you're right on that edge, right on that edge there, all right? And now this, I am going to use some dimensionals to do this. Um, you can use the minis that come with it or your minis or you could use large dimensionals on this or you could even put this down flat if you wanted to. I like the dimension on it actually. So I'm just going to use some of my minis. Like I said for this piece regular dimensionals would be fine but I've got those out and this is fine also. I'm going to have just so much fun putting the rest of these beautiful birthday cards together. Just a fun card. I love a nice little project. Sometimes I get tired of a card that just folds in half. Um, so it's nice to have something that when you open it up, surprise, the cake pops up at you. That's kind of nice. So I take all these little backs off here. And we're going to attach this right here. I'm allowing this banner to be on the upper part of this banner right here. And that's how we're going to attach that card. So here's our cards, guys. There's a 31. There's a 61. I've got a couple more to make. And here's our other cards right here. What a bunch of beautiful birthday cards. Let's just take two of them out. Let's do me and Mason. 61 and 8. How's that? <laughs> So with this card, uh, with this card, I'm using the pink, and then with this card, I'm using the yellow inside the envelope. And you could do whatever you want. They mix and match. No big deal. There's our paper pumpkin for this month, guys. Some really fun birthday cards, and here is your free stamp set. Look for alternative projects on my YouTube channel with this this weekend. Remember, the balloon fits the balloon punch. If you have the balloon punch, this is going to fit. But look for some alternative projects because these numbers are too cute because they're polka dotted. Thanks again for watching. If you'd like to order anything, please go to stampinginthevalley.com, click on the big blue button, order any and all of your Stampin' Up! products. Thanks again for watching and happy crafting!